Hi, my name is John Willis. I'm the instructor for EM690, which is the engineering management capstone course. And I just want to take this opportunity to introduce myself, talk a little bit about uh, the course, and then provide you with some contact information should you have any questions uh, about the course as we go forward. Uh, so the, there's some unique aspects of this particular course in that it is going to be different than uh, what you've seen in your previous coursework, which are primary, uh, primarily lecture-based courses. This is sort of an independent projects course where I serve, instead of like a, a direct teacher of, of course material, more of a mentor and guide as you move through the process. So what I'm going to do is sort of share uh, this, this briefing with you. Again, this is for those that are entering the summer semester 2017. Right now we've got about 63 students uh, broken into four different sections, two that are based in, uh, that will be based sort of out of the Beacon group, and then uh, two groups that are the New York City group. And so the agenda that I'll use will be to provide a basic personal introduction uh, of me, then provide you with uh, a course overview, philosophy, objectives, and talk about the deliverables and timeline, and then provide you with some contact uh, information. As far as a personal introduction, I have a couple of engineering degrees from the University of Virginia. I served for 20 years, uh, just over 20 years in the Army, first as a field artillery officer, then as a, uh, uh, sort of shifted over to the uh, academic and research side of the Army as a professor in the systems engineering department at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. So I did two tours there, 99 to 02 and 06 to 09. Uh, between those two tours, I had a four-year stint at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California, where I served as a research analyst and did some, some teaching there. And then retired from the Army in 2009 and have been involved in a number of uh, professional activities, including uh, work as an analyst and, and doing business development work uh, for a Monterey-based firm called Augustine Consulting. Also, I do finance work for a veteran nonprofit organization called Team Red, White, and Blue. I have a small consultancy that I do some, some teaching uh, through. Also own a small lodging bed and breakfast operation that is uh, listed in Airbnb uh, here in Highland Falls, New York. And then I'm a co-owner of a family farm down in Virginia. Uh, also work with a couple of local development corporations, uh, one based uh, around utilities and one around economic development here in the Highland Falls area. And then uh, as a member of the local uh, Rotary Club, I serve as the race director for a 5K, 10K race called the Storm King Run. So that's just sort of my background. Uh, as far as the course, again, uh, different than many of the courses you've had in the past in that it is a project-based course where you will solve a real-world problem. That problem is going to be something that you bring to the table, that you define. Uh, it can be something for the company that you work for or some a, a problem that maybe one of your clients or customers is facing. The goal is that you apply some of the skills and methodologies that you've learned in your coursework to date uh, to a semester-long project effort. And we will conduct a series of in-progress reviews, so you'll have two deliverables where, where you'll sort of provide me an update of where you are in, uh, in, the, in your project, and there will be a final paper and a final presentation, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here shortly. All of your deliverables will be submitted through the Moodle platform. I'll provide links to that as we get closer to the start of the semester. And uh, the final presentations, two groups will pr present in Beacon and two groups will present in New York City. And I'll provide the timelines and locations of that as we, uh, as we get uh, near the end of the briefing. As far as communicating with me, I prefer that you use the clarkson.edu email address that I'll show at the end of the presentation. And uh, also I'll provide you with a couple of phone numbers if you wanna reach out that way. And then uh, it's, it's always fine just to connect via Google Hangout if you have something you want to present to me uh, or if you just prefer meeting sort of in a, in a, in a virtual meeting platform of, uh, environment, that's just fine. So I'm happy to do any of these means of communication uh, as we go through. But there are not regular meeting times 
where we as a, as a group are going to be meeting. This just shows a potential methodology that you might apply. You can use any methodology that you choose. Uh, this is one that is taught at, the, at, at West Point uh, in the systems engineering department. It's called the systems decision process. And the bottom line for any methodology that you use is that you sort of start with an understanding of the existing system. You define a desired end state for that system and that you apply a methodology that sort of walks through defining the problem, coming up with a set of stakeholders, conducting interviews and surveys with those stakeholders, defining a set of functions, objectives for the system. And one critical component is, is defining a set of metrics or evaluation measures that you're gonna use in the next phase, which is where you're developing a set of alternatives. The alternatives that you develop need to be scored uh, with some sort of weighted metric system. And so uh, a weighted series uh, of evaluation measures or criteria. And uh, so you would, in the solution design phase, you'll be applying some creativity and innovation and some research and benchmarking to identify a set of alternatives. You'll then score those alternatives uh, in the decision-making step and provide uh, some costing data, and then present to the decision maker what uh, you feel is going to be the optimal approach for, uh, for your particular system. Then you define some implementation steps that are going to include establishing a budget, any acquisition effort that needs to take place in terms of buying new hardware, new software. Uh, there may be uh, new personnel that need to be hired. There may be personnel that need to be fired, etc. So this, again, just showing one potential approach. Uh, another is the DMAIC methodology. This one is from the Lean Six Sigma uh, uh, community, and it is one that has very similar types of activities, uh, is defined by, well, the steps are define, measure, analyze, improve, control, but you could easily map a number of the, the, uh, the steps and bullets that are here to that previous systems decision process. The bottom line being one of uh, gathering information, identifying the problem, coming up with metrics, analysis, modeling, uh, and, uh, and ultimately coming up with a decision among a, from a set of defined alternatives, and then coming up with uh, any uh, control measures and implementation steps that you're going to to apply. Again, you're welcome to use DMAIC, the SDP I defined, or any other methodology, as long as you sort of hit on some of the, the key components that are sort of outlined uh, by the, these two slides. As far as the course philosophy, again, this is not a, a lecture course. There are not regular course meetings. Um, there are no term papers or exams or quizzes. It is a practicum that uh, is supervised by me. And uh, the idea is that you are applying previously studied theory to a, to a problem that you identify. It is your plan, it is not mine. We, uh, your very first deliverable is a, uh, we'll call it a contract or a proposal uh, that sort of lays out, uh, uh, lays out your problem and approach. Uh, and uh, an initial set of evaluation measures. And I'll provide some information at the, uh, near the end of the briefing that sort of lays out the, uh, uh, for that initial contract uh, product. The uh, objectives for the course, again, applying the techniques and concepts that you've learned in your uh, coursework to date, uh, concepts and techniques that you also learn through additional research and study. So not everything that you might apply to this course is necessarily going to be stuff that you have learned. You might have to do some additional research uh, in order to, uh, let's say there was a particular modeling and simulation uh, package that you wanted to uh, apply to this project that you hadn't previously used in coursework. You're welcome to do that. Uh, also, one of the objectives is communication, both through your written work and through a final oral presentation. And then also that you are identifying the, the requirements for your particular project. You're identifying a set of sources that you're going to uh, develop through research and 
uh, and study, and then uh, any assumptions that you're making as you move your project forward. And then finally, the idea of applying innovation and creativity as you develop your alternative solutions to the problem. As far as assessment, there are five primary deliverables. The uh, proposal, which for you will be due on June the 5th, a uh, two progress reports on the 13th and 17th of July, and then a set of final presentations, uh, two groups um, there in, uh, in late July, 28th to 29th for the Beacon group, and then the 4th and 5th uh, for, of August for the New York City group. The final written report will be due for all students on the 5th of August. Again, that all, all of the written deliverables will be uploaded to the Moodle platform. As far as the oral presentation, it's important that you note that there will only be about 15 minutes per student. We have 63 students that we've got to get through in four days total. Uh, we're going to try and do about three uh, presentations per hour over those four days. And so you'll have about 15 minutes plus maybe uh, five minutes for, for questions and transition time. So. Uh, so not a, long, uh, not a long oral presentation, just a, a, an overview of your approach and findings. And I'll provide some, some details on what those presentations might look like. Uh, next, just sort of an overview of uh, a potential contract proposal format. Uh, what I'm looking for here is usually about two to five pages using Arial or Times New Roman font that's just easily readable, uh, convert it into a PDF uh, file or a Word doc file, uh, and that, you, that you're writing it out, not just using a set of, of bullets. Again, Moodle will be the platform for uploading it. And the format you might use is providing an overview of your, uh, your company or your organization and what your role within that company or organization is and the tasks that you perform, an overview of the problem. Uh, what is the current system? Uh, what is the uh, what are the issues that need to be addressed? Basically, uh, what is the problem you're you're going to attack here, and what is the desired end state for that system? Then, identifying a set of stakeholders, including the decision maker, clients, any of any folks that are affected by uh, the particular decision, users of the system, uh, etc. Then the methodological approach or process that you plan to use, the steps and phases that you're going to use to address the, the problem. And again, it could be one of the formalized uh, methodologies that I've uh, discussed or something else. But critical that you identify the metrics that you're going to use to identify potential solutions on your proposal. This can just be sort of an initial set of, of metrics, and you can continue to refine those as your project moves forward. It's helpful if you identify some sources of data, sources of research um, that you plan to use, and any specific tools that you know that you might be applying uh, in, for instance, a modeling and simulation package if you're going to be, say, suggesting an upgrade to a manufacturing process that might have an assembly line and you wanted to show the changes in a, a, a simulation of some kind. That would, you're, you're welcome to do that. Uh, and uh, it's helpful if you can identify that you plan to use those. Then maybe uh, some mention of your approach to implementation and assessment, any, any budget uh, that may be there. Uh, and you've made these recommendations, where's the funding going to come from? And uh, how you might monitor, control, or assess the performance of the final product. And then just briefly listing any potential challenges. These all often come in the form of resistance uh, from the current stakeholders, uh, resistance from, from management, uh, et cetera. It could be budgetary challenges or, or funding challenges that you see, anything like that. So that's sort of that, this initial document uh, that, uh, that you'll put together as your very first deliverable. Again, the class starts in 22nd of May, so you'll have some time to, to put all that together. Finally, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me at uh, this ClarksonEDU email address or reach out uh, via phone at my office number or my mobile number, both are listed there. And uh, I really look forward to working together with you on your projects and, and to meeting you at your final presentations and engaging with you throughout the semester. So thanks 
and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.